don't be this guy, please. It's funny, it's funny and all to see it, but please. And also, maybe that cat, maybe that cat, that what might be cool, because who doesn't love cats? Let's jump right on into the video. So anyway, fentanyl withdrawal, the detox and what to expect. We'll be covering some of the most common symptoms and also some of the most common things you can do to help yourself if you are going through a fentanyl detox or even opiates or opioids, because a lot of these concepts apply. Fentanyl I'll really hit on because that's the most common. It's the access to it is very common, but also outside of that, that one, that mere fact, overdosing on fentanyl is too easy today and it's really sad. So I'm going to be also discussing ways if you're going to, if you're trying to stop because you've seen people unfortunately overdose on it, you've overdosed on it yourself, things you can use right now, right now, if you're saying to yourself, I need to stop, I need to stop. And this is just good knowledge to pass along to your friend, to, to your friends as well. So let's jump right on into it. Like and subscribe and leave a comment. Uh, just leave an appropriate comment. That's all I ask. I will respond to them. And we've got some stuff coming on down the line that we'll be doing. So let's jump right into the video. All right, now number one, the first most common detox sign when coming off of fentanyl or opiates or opioids is going to be the flu-like symptoms. Flu-like symptoms come on very quickly. Seeing this in the psychiatric setting as an RN and seeing this on a consistent basis if you if you've been using for let's just say six months daily and you have that pulled away your plug whoever you've been getting it from you're gonna suffer from flu-like symptoms and at minimum with this i will say minimum with it you will feel very unpleasant have a lot of temperature swings and also a lot of bone aches that is big so with number one the flu-like symptoms nausea vomiting you name it, uh, GI upset, diarrhea, due to maybe being constipated from using fentanyl or opiates or opioids, or even, you know, lean, purple drink. That's very common, so having GI upset after this, very common. But, once again, when we get to how we can actually deal with this and manage it a little bit better, this that will help with that. So just watch, watch, through, to, watch uh, through till the end. Okay, now the second most common uh, uh, fentanyl, really with fentanyl or opioids, what, what to expect, the second most common, is not wanting to get out of bed. Flu-like symptoms, but also sleeping. And I tried to kind of hit this, not, not in true, fa complete fashion, but kind of in chronological order as well, but not wanting to get out of bed. Sli and I put sleep because a lot of times that's what you're trying to get and it's hard to get. But sleeping and laying and being in bed, your body needs that recovery time. You do need sleep. So if you are tired and needing to, and needing to sleep while you're detoxing, obviously do this. Don't try to stay up and can move around over and over because you're going to be in a lot of pain. And it, once again, what kind of pain a lot of times? Even if you're using things um, recreationally like Suboxone, Subutex, those bone, that bone pain because a lot of times with some of these things like Suboxone or even Subutex in particular, it's de it, when it's in your body and you've been using it for years, it gets into your it's, it can pretty much it, it gets into your bones. So a lot of times when people exercise, uh, they'll feel the withdrawal can be a little bit more intense at times. But that was once again, I'm getting off the main topic, but let's get back to it. So number two is sleep. Number three, and I just jot down these things as I go. Lack of appetite. Now with this lack of appetite, it's due to having nausea and vomiting with the flu-like symptoms. And when I said flu-like symptoms is number one, flu-like symptoms, nausea, vomiting, temperature swings, not being able to get out of bed, body aches, just feeling sick. That's why I didn't go too in depth on that, but just generalized flu-like symptoms that would last two to three days. Uh, then sleep, then here we are at a lack of appetite. The appetite one is very interesting, but also something that needs to be just briefly touched on because with lack of appetite your body is going to be let's just say this depleted of its natural uh, vitamins and even minerals as well so it is crucial when you're sleeping or trying to 
to if trying to get something if you can like a nausea med like zofrin and whatnot and trying to make sure at first before pushing even bland foods hydration status water if you are sleeping make it an effort every six every 68 hours to get up to go check once again what did i say in the last one about the meth detox your urine color urine color is huge you want it to be clear to light tinted yellow so hydration status Sleep and hydration go hand in hand. And then once again, with the appetite, bland foods, crackers. Don't jump right into fruit and stuff because that you'll already have GI upset. Don't be doing that. Crackers, maybe a little bit of some chicken noodle soup. Don't spice it out too hard though. Trust me, you do not want to do that. You will have the shits and you will, and you will probably throw up as well. But bland foods... Powerade is huge. Now, Powerade, not just that alone. You know, if you're drinking sodas during this, it's going to make it a lot worse. And just don't, just don't do it. Because I don't even think a lot of people wouldn't be able to drink sodas due to the nausea of this. But a lot of times, if you can get Powerade down, I would say the next thing you should go for, in my opinion, if you feel up to it, would be to actually drink on some Powerade. So this is, once I get into... This is one way to prep if you know you're going to be stopping something. You've tapered something all the way down or you're cold turkeying it. These are things that will only help you. So hydration. Now, number four. Number four. Impul okay, number four. This is something that comes typically from the, when, you, when you first stop your cutoff. Typically, the flu-like symptoms, these things can last upwards of typically anywhere from Two to two, depending on how much you're using and whatnot in body chemistries, two, two days to approximately a week and a half of these flu-like symptoms. Then it will transition in that into what I'm going to be talking about real quick is that imp number four, which is the mental cravings come in. And those some for some people, even when going through the physical withdrawals, because they can't, is it's hard to do. That's why they go back because they're like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't make it. Yes, you can make it. I see plenty of patients that can do it. They can. They can and they will, and they have plenty of patients who've been success successful. I didn't mean to hit hard on Suboxone or Subutex as being a bad thing. It's not. It saves lives. It saves lives from people using heroin. Um, big thing. But that impulse to use is a lot of times that, 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 Outside of the flu-like symptoms, like if you ask somebody, oh, would you rather have flu-like symptoms for a week and a half to even two weeks, or would you rather skip all that and have mental cravings a lot longer? I guarantee you they'd pick the flu-like symptoms because going through that and just being done with it, it you know you'll be done. Mental cravings, once, you, once again, is a, you know, you have to ask yourself, what are the reasons why you were using in the first place? I mean, that's that's the reality of it. A lot of times, there can be hidden or underlying mental health concerns. Now, briefly, I'm just going to touch on this for a second. How, and this, this applies just in general to anyone really detoxing from anything in, per in particular, fentanyl, heroin, opiates, opioids, and even, even as well to th even to other things such as methamphetamine, things like this. Now, what can help? You're going to be going from hot to cold a lot. That is huge temperature swings, which are very uncomfortable for some people. However, if you have access to uh, ice packs and even heating packs, this will really help when you're trying to sleep. I'll obviously don't leave one on for more than, you know, even five to 10 minutes at a time. Rotate transition in regards to what feels more comfortable for you. Another thing, if you have access, showers. A lot of times when you're laying there, you're nauseous, you're vomiting, you're, you know, you can't be dizzy. If you have the energy and you're not dizzy, so I don't want you to, I don't, I, you shouldn't be doing this if you're dizzy because you can become a, you're a fall risk right now. If you're not dizzy and you're kind of moving around and whatnot, if you can make it to the, sh if you can make it to the shower in particular, that will help because that'll just, it helps your, you know, it it can help raise that body temperature. You can push out some of those toxins and you just feel clean. Sometimes there's just something good about just feeling clean. Like for example, you know, you haven't gotten a haircut for a while. You go get your haircut, you feel like a new person. 
you just feel good. That's kind of how I would describe to somebody going through detox, why showers are important if you have access to it. And also one thing I wanted to hit on just briefly on here is once again, the mental exhaustion you'll be feeling. The mental exhaustion and how, what can help with that is even though it's hard at first is changing that routine, trying to change that routine up. That can really help long-term long-term with your long-term success and this can go to any anything somebody's detoxing off of and i say this say that say this with drug addictions in particular because a lot of times people have routines in regards to this is the time i you i was using every day this was the time i was doing this i was doing that i was getting up at 11 in the morning i was getting up you know whenever changing that i'm not saying go to being if you were like uh completely you know if you're like completely going, trying to go like nocturnal or something. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if you were getting up at 11, you know, try to get up a little bit earlier, try to exercise because that'll help create those new brain pathways as discussed, uh, which can be, can be a lifesaver. Also the bland foods as well. I will tell you this, the bland foods, you kind of have to be careful with sometimes because of the GI upset you're going through and more than likely, and this is for people who drink a lot of lean or purple drink, a lot of times you get so constipated because you haven't been drinking water and whatnot to where when you first start going, you it leads to horrible, horrible diarrhea. Horrible to where you can bear, you know, horrible diarrhea. So be very careful if you can eat at first. So meaning let's say you're having horrible diarrhea and you're not nauseous be very careful do stay away from fruits anything acidic if you're going to have some bland foods just be very cautious eat even just a cracker or two see how that settles if you're not already on the toilet and just go from there so and also i'm not saying don't eat if you have if you're having diarrhea do eat you still need to eat just pick the right foods because your body still needs nutrition even though it's diarrhea and you're it's going through you quickly your body still will pick up some of the nutrients, which is better than nothing. That's the same even with water or Powerade. Even if you're not holding it down long, and the second the liquid hits your mouth, yeah, it, your body, uh, your mouth will start absorbing it, your teeth, your lips, everything, everything. So hope this kind of helped this another video in regards to what can make the detox a little bit easier, in particular, if you're going through fentanyl withdrawal or even opiates and opioids and also some some other and these and a lot of these can be applied to other sorts of uh drug use but i want to i want you to know that this is not something that if you're going through benzo withdrawal this is not something th these things can help you but there are some other things you really do need to know and alcohol as well in order to have a successful detox with that so this does not apply to alcohol detox. This does not apply to benzo detox. Um, this alone, that is. Uh, new video coming out soon. I'm almost done with the methamphetamine uh, video in regards to its history. Bear with me on that. Guys, I'm just going to keep on putting out content as much as I can. Anything mental health related. So kick back, relax. Check out all my playlists. I'm still running 365 days. Yes, I do like poetry. Check out that short. This is your daily dose of mental health with Adam. Have a great, great weekend.